I'm just breaking into the hobby of astronomy. It's inevitable that I would seek the wisdom of the internet to get started. Most experienced astronomers recommend starting with binoculars. I tried to find a way to mount my binoculars so that I could overcome two problems. One, my binoculars are heavy. I get tired of holding them up and it's also difficult to keep them reasonably steady. The second problem is that looking up at the night sky for any length of time, I strain my neck. This is the sky window, which looks like it would solve both problems, except that it was last manufactured more than 10 years ago, and I can't find it for sale, new or used. Someone made a simple mirror mount and used a small tripod for the binoculars. This design appeals because it shares many of the benefits of the sky window. The weight of the binoculars is not on my arms. It's steady. I can sit, although a table is required. Best of all, the view is downward like a microscope, so there is less strain on my neck. I chose to create a, a bipod support for my binoculars. It's simple to construct with a minimum of drilling and cutting. It has high tolerances and is very forgiving of my lack of experience with hand tools or even ability to cut a straight line. It's made from steel plate that I cut down to 8 inches wide, to which I've bolted two aluminum channels. I chose the material simply because they were sturdy, cheap, and readily available. Dimensions were more or less arbitrary. 12 inches seemed like a good length for the legs, having a wide enough stance to straddle a decent sized mirror. I was going to drill a number of holes to adjust the legs, but as it turned out, my initial placement worked well. The binocular attaches to the bipod using a binocular tripod adapter secured with a 1 quarter 20 bolt with a plastic knob. The adapter is by Barska. Found on Amazon, it worked very well. The binocular weighs several times more than the bipod supporting it but this bipod arrangement allows both hands to grip the binoculars. It's able to swing through a significant arc with good control. It can balance on one leg, tilting to one side or the other, still staying very stable. Using a bipod, the binoculars can walk forward and back. The rubber feet keep it from slipping or marring whatever surface it stands on. The binocular stands over a first surface mirror. This type of mirror, with this type of mirror, the light doesn't pass through the glass because the reflective surface is on the near side, the first surface. This is my bathroom mirror, which I used in my initial binocular observations. It's not first surface, so I need to order one and determine the size I want experimentally. I used some cardboard pieces to act as blinders, moving them around to discover the edge of the field of view. They are nowhere near f uh, focus, so I have to determine the limits by detecting movement. I repeated this procedure several times and then rounded up a little to settle on the final dimension of the mirror I'd need. I decided on 8 by 10 inches. I'd need something to mount the mirror and to protect it. My eureka moment came as I was shopping at the local Walmart. I found this metal box, a cake pan, complete with cover and handle just the right size. To attach the mirror in the pan, I drilled a few holes and mounted these brackets to the inside. I cut a notch so that I could slip the mirror into place without applying a lot of pressure on the mirror to get the pin into the hole. To keep the pan from sliding around on the table, I attached rubber feet. They had to be screwed into the pan because while they were self-adhesive, they kept coming off. After all, the pan is Teflon coated. Even a first surface mirror has a second side, 
It behaves like a traditional mirror. I used that side to size up brackets and check fittings. Now it's time to mount the mirror with the business side ready to use. Again at Walmart, I found some report covers and I cut a few bindings down to fit the mirror like a frame. This would provide a place to push the mirror to the desired angle and leave fewer fingerprints. To make a hinge in order to pivot the mirror, I drilled a hole in each of two binder clips and pushed a 1 quarter 20 bolt through. I cushioned the clip with a small piece of sheet rubber. Finally, I checked to make sure that the hinges were centered, the mirror rocked smoothly, and there was adequate clearance all around. This is one view of how everything comes together. I expect very good coverage of the sky because of the ability to rock both the binocular and the mirror. This is the binocular and mirror in action. Even as separate pieces, they are portable and require less than a minute to set up. It's so easy that it's worth doing for just a few minutes of observation or reacting to a spur of the moment decision to take advantage of a break in the clouds. The real benefit is that maintaining an obs observing posture doesn't strain either my arms or my neck. I can keep my eyes glued to the sky without the need to take a break quite so often. Of course, I'm in pantomime here in daylight just to demonstrate the maneuvers used to explore the sky. This is Jupiter and it's pretty, pretty faithful to the way I saw it through the binocular and the mirror. I made this video by jamming a camera into one eyepiece while looking through the other. It's uncollimated and not well focused. However, you can see four Jovian moons. But this setup is not intended for photography or videography, but for visual observation. The image jumps around because I captured only about two or three frames per second. And I'm slowing down playback because if I didn't, the video, which took 20 minutes to record, would play back in just over one minute. Even so, I've truncated the video, or the recording, for this video. Live, Jupiter gently bobbed up and down <laughs> with my breathing. It drifted from, uh, to the right, that's the west, then I would drag it back. Once in a while, I lifted my head to check that sharp cap still saw the planet, and when I did that, it jumped a little. When observing the planet live, it moves very slowly and smoothly. My brain is probably doing a lot of interpolation, much like being able to read a book while walking, but recording a video while walking ends up very jerky. The binoculars and the mirror really perform better than it appears in this video. The apparatus does what I intended, letting me watch the sky for extended periods without muscle strain. 